Hello fellow manga readers and welcome to my birthday haul. Now there is a lot of manga here, around 150 volumes, some of which I bought at local shops. We supported a lot of shops uh, the last month, I can tell you that. Um, I bought a lot of stuff from Book Depot and um, I also got some presents since obviously it was my birthday. Anyway, let's get right into the manga haul and start with stuff we got from local shops because I have Ivan right next to me and it is a lot. So uh, let's get started with one of the new shows that I picked up, or I should say me and my girlfriend. And we picked up Kuma Miko, as you can see. Now you might see this and think, this looks familiar. And that could very well be because this is the same mangaka that did Kuma Kuma Bear, or Bear Bear Bear, great title. Anyway, uh, it's just a very cute series. It is by One Piece Books. Um, that's not One Piece, it's, uh, it's like a publisher. But um, yeah, so we picked these up second hand, most of them. And uh, they are in really good condition, I must say. They have a very nice soft touch finish. I can't read you a synopsis because there's no volume one. But uh, I'll show you a bit of the inside. And it does look rather cute, I must say. Just a cute little slice of life about probably a bear and a girl. Um, I would guess. So that's very cool indeed. Yes. Let's get to the next one. This is another series we both decided to start here in the Netherlands. And we are only picking up volumes from our local shop to support it. Um, for this series. And it's called Kino's Journey. And it is very, very nice. It's originally from a novel. And sometimes I do feel like I'm missing some information or something. So... I did notice that while reading, but uh, still nonetheless, I really like it. Also a slice of life, but it's a bit more, um, it covers a bit more harsh topics, I must say. It was a li little bit more dark than I expected, which I think is good because I love dark stories. As you can see, we're missing volume four. Epo didn't have it, so I'll have to wait until they do have it. Uh, I think Vertical did a great job on the spines. I think they look very nice and clean, but volume seven for, for some reason, as like a part of the cover and spine, which I don't mind, but either start it that way or don't change it, I, I feel. So uh, yeah, that is uh, not so nice in my opinion. There's volume 7, the cover, volume 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, and I've read up till 3 at the moment. Um, so it's time to read the synopsis as this is a new mango and it's volume 1, so uh, let's do it. Kino travels with the trusty talking motorrad Hermes. The duo are always together with Hermes providing speed and Kino providing balance. They stay in each country for no more than three days as a rule, enough time to learn about each destination's unique customs and people. And so Kino and Hermes journey ever onward. It's very nice, it's kind of like uh, short stories basically, the, of the places they visit, the people they meet, and uh, yeah, I really like it. The art also looks pretty nice, I must say. And uh, yeah, it is pretty dark, I must say as well. But uh, I really like it so far. I'm really glad. I'm really glad we picked this up as our first series together. Now let's continue. I also picked up Air Gear Volume 31, which, which is one of the out of print volumes, um, because my girlfriend really likes sports manga. And, uh, well, she wanted to start Air Gear as well, so I'll help her a bit with that. Very nice from Epo. Next up, this one I got from Den Haag, or The Hague. Uh, it's Ran and the Grey World Volume 2. This was from the second-hand section, so it was 50% off. And uh, that's very nice, I must say. I always wanted to start this series. Looks very nice. Uh, and it's the same mangaka, I believe, that uh, also did um, go with the clouds north by one northwest, I believe. Um, there you have it. Looks nice. And hopefully we'll pick up the rest soon. Moving on, we have here a series that I started recently. It's Asadora by the same mangaka as the manga behind her monster, 20th Century Boys. He's just one of the best mangaka out there, in my opinion. And this one, it's only just started. Only three volumes out at the moment, but I really like it. I also read this one, finished it. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I can't wait for volume four. It's really nice, I must say. Expensive volumes though. These are 15 US retail, but it is a signature and a high quality one at that. So that is very nice indeed. Here's how it looks. Very, very nice. Yes, yes. Continuing on, I'll leave some of the bigger series for last. This is one we picked up in a store in Limburg, which is the south of the Netherlands. And we have Emerald. I've never heard of this before. It's from the mangaka of Blade of the Immortal, as you can see, which is very nice because Blade of the Immortal has some great art, a great story. And uh, here we have Emerald. It's a one-shot, also by Dark Horse, just like Blade of the Immortal. And it looks rather nice. I haven't read this one yet, so I can't recommend it just yet. But, uh, I mean... Believe the model is expensive, and if you're looking for, a, and if you're looking for a series which doesn't break the bank, it's only one volume in this case, then uh, that could be worth picking up. Let's read some of the synopsis. In Emerald, Samurai tells his first explosive adventure set in the Wild West, and a series of humorous vignettes about two swaggering motormouth teen girls is woven through several other riveting tales. Very cool. Doesn't really say much, but uh, Wild West. Very cool. Very different setting than Blade of the Immortal. Then next up, this is a series I started a long time ago, but I never could find Volume 3 for some reason. So here we have Barakamon Volume 3. Just like Asadora, 15 US retail, which is expensive. But man, these volumes are so high quality, so nice. They do get smudged up easily, so be careful with smudging. But uh, like I said, it is really nice quality. I personally have only read like one volume and that was like two years ago, so I really need to reread that. But it's a slice of life uh, comedy, I believe, and it's seen as one of the best slice of lives in existence. So if you like it, pick it up, even though it's so expensive. Support the mangaka, you know what I'm saying? Very high quality volume. Next. Next up, also picked up in the same store, is Crying Freeman Volume 2 and 5. Now, you might think, uh, what is this? Well, it's by Kazuo Koike. And if you don't know me, I love me, my Kazuo Koike. Great stories, absolutely love it. Lone Wolf and Cup, Samurai Executioner, his manga are just so amazing. Uh, but uh, it is by Dark Horse, and uh, in this case, and in most cases, it means that it's out of print. Uh, unfortunately, with this one as well, already have volume 1, so I need to get volume 3 and 4 still. I don't even know how many volumes this has, I think not that much. Uh, under 10, I believe. And these are still on seal, which I'm going to get out because I want to read them, of course. But for now, they'll look nice in the seal. Very, very cool. Two-in-ones by the looks of it. And uh, 15 US. I mean, that's very respectable for an omnibus. So that is it for Crying Freeman. Next up, let's go back to some of the books that I've already started before. Now, the next one is a very popular manga. And it's called The Case Study of Vanitas. It is especially popular since um, last season this was airing and uh, it is great. Um, I basically got the Pandora box a long time ago. Someone in the chat told me, check out the case of the Vanitas, never heard of it. But I was like, I'm going to try it out and they are amazing. Really love this manga. Um, Pandora Hearts is in my opinion still better, but I really like this series as well. Uh, eight volumes out, this is the last one. The anime was uh, is finished at the moment, I think. But there's a second season coming. And uh, it's very, very good. I must say, very cool. Volume 8, very, very nice. Now, it's the same story actually with this manga as with Vanitas. It is To Your Eternity, volume 14, the latest. Already, this is actually my first manga ever. Um, and uh, I picked up volume 1 in, I think it was two years ago. And uh, yeah, now we have volume 14 out. So I've been waiting for this for a long time. I really, really like the series. And uh, it also has a finished anime last season. And that's why it's uh, most sold out um, a lot. <laughs> but I really, really like this series. Really do, I must say. It's very, very nice. Very cool. Next up, I have a series that I have heard before, but I never really took a serious look at until now. Until I saw it in Leiden, which is one of the student cities in the Netherlands. And it's Aria, the masterpiece. And some of them still has a sticker on it, I need to take that off. It is by Tokyo Poop. Uh, sorry, excuse me, Tokyo Pop. 
Uh, but I must say, this is probably one of the best looking Tokyo Pop series I've ever had. Like, it just has the gold logo here on the front, and then a very nice, shiny, glossy logo on the back. I really love the look of this, it looks very nice. And uh, yeah, it's just a really good one. It's also a slice of life, a uh, little bit of comedy thrown in there. And uh, it's, it's, it's really good. Uh, these are all the out of print books. Um, so I can basically start buying the rest later uh, at any point in time. A little bit low money right now. So I'll buy those later, but I'm very happy to own it. I read volume one already and it was very enjoyable, I must say. This is how they're gonna look in the bookcase. Very nice, I feel. Now, volume one obviously has a synopsis. Let's read that. Wait, does it? Hello? There we go, the synopsis. On the planet Aqua, a world once known as Mars, Akari Mizunashi has just made her home in the town of Neo Venetia. In pursuit of her dream to become an Undyne, a gondolier who leads high end tours around the city, Akari joins as a trainee with the Aria Company. There she explores the beauty of the city and this vibrant new world along with other trainees from Aria and rival companies, working hard for her dreams and making new friends along the way. Very nice and like I said I really like these editions, they look very very nice, feel very nice, high quality, really recommend it. Next up we have another continuation of a series that I've had for quite some time. And it is The Grey Man, Volume 27. Uh, <laughs> fun fact, in my collection video, I already had this and I was like, well, it's been cancelled, so I'm not going to read it, probably going to sell it. And people were like so mad at my comments, oh my god. So, I finally gave it a go and I don't regret it. It's honestly, it is in my top 9 favorite manga. If you haven't seen that uh, video, I'll link it out right up here if I don't forget. But um, it is great. It's one of my favorite series. Um, the releases are very slow at the moment, but of course, health number one priority. Sorry, um, and uh, it's just it's just a great manga, and her art has or his art, I'm not sure, has increased so much. Like when it comes to quality, in the last few years, like it's it's a crazy jump, probably one of the biggest jumps I've seen personally, and uh, it looks great. It is great. Uh, yeah, it's just an amazing uh, shonen. It's more like a seinen to me, but. I really like it. One of the few shonen that I actually enjoy. Now the next series we started collecting is House of Five Leaves. Of his signature book as you can see. They look pretty minimalist I would say the covers. I like it. A very different art style. Almost doesn't look like manga anymore in my opinion. It's a very comic like art style. Um, now we don't have volume one so I can't read you a synopsis but this is what it looks like. Yeah, I, I feel it's very, uh, very unique. I don't see mangas like this often, and I think it looks rather nice. So I can't wait to get the rest to complete it, and uh, that is House of Five Leaves. Moving on, we have the complete series of Old Boy, which is very nice, very happy to have it. As you can see, part of it is sealed, but uh, yeah, we have it complete. It's out of print. Uh, I've been wanting it for quite some time since a lot of people were talking about it in my discord and um, Yeah, it's just it's just a great. Uh, I heard it's a great movie great manga as well And uh, I have it now so it's time to read it. I heard it's very dark. I like dark so that's great and uh, Yes, yes, very very cool Old boy as you can see now as it is a new manga and we have a first volume We're obviously going to read the synopsis it is also open, so I can show you the art as well. It looks nice, I must say. Very cool. And here we go. Ten years ago, they took him. He doesn't know who. For ten years, he was confined in a private prison. He doesn't know why. For ten years, his only contact with the outside world was a television set and the voices of his jailers. In time, he lost himself, changed, transformed himself into something else. Something hard something lethal. Now, suddenly and without any explanation, his incarceration ends. He is sedated, stuffed inside a trunk and dumped in a park. When he wakes, he will try to reclaim what's left of his life and what's left is revenge. That sounds really interesting. I'm actually gonna probably read that pretty soon because that sounds very cool. 
Yes, very happy to own it and uh, can't wait to read it. This shows I actually already have in my collection, fun fact. But as omnibuses, which I'm selling because I'm too afraid to read that. Like I read like the first omnibus, which was not very comfortable because you really don't want to uh, damage it by reading it and the spine could crack, you know. So I picked up the singles because singles are nice. And right here, we have three through 14, missing a few volumes in between. As you can see, we're missing volume six. And that's it, actually, I think, right? Yeah, well, one and two as well, of course. But um, yes, uh, I picked these up for retail and I'm very happy to have it. Apparently, there was a reservation for these at Apo uh, and uh, they waited three years for the person to pick it up, uh, put it in the back, but never put it back in the store. So when I saw it in the store, I was like, I have to get this because I'm, I really want to get the singles. They are very nice. A few kind of like cardboard somewhat in a good way. And it's a really fun series, I must say. I was also read the first Omnibus. It's like horror, but also comedy. And I, I really love it. I really can't wait to read it once I get volume 1 and 2 and 6. Um, yes. If you want the Omnibuses, you can contact me, of course. Because I'm selling those. Now, let's get to the out-of-print stuff we got from the shops. Which we will all be keeping. And we'll keep the best one for last. Because that's actually a limited edition. Now, let's start with this one. It's Princess Knight Part 1 by Osamu Tezuka. Now, if you don't know who that is, it is pretty much the godfather of manga. And when I saw this in Dordrecht, which, I, which I've actually never been before, I was like, you know what? Love me my Tezuka. Let's pick it up because I want to pick up everything from him, pretty much. Which I know, very expensive because it's all very out of print. But I'm still going to try. So, we have a synopsis here. Let's read it. Princess Knight is a fast-paced tale of a heroic princess who can best any man at fencing, yet is delicate and graceful enough to catch the eye of Prince Charming. Filled with narrow escapes, treacherous courtiers, I don't know what that means, uh, dashing pirates, meddlesome witches, magical transformations, and cinema-worthy displays of daring do, you'll, you'll be swept right along as Sapphire tackles one challenge after another. Princess Knight mixes themes of gender identity and politics with classic shoujo-style illustration to create a charming proto-feminist masterpiece by the godfather of manga, like I said, um, who is, that has captured the hearts of generations of readers. Well, I should probably get volume 2 as well. It's uh, 25 US because they noticed it was out of print, uh, unfortunately. Um, but uh, at least we have it now. Expanding our Tezuka collection. Very nice. Now, talking about out-of-print stuff, we have two more. And this is also a legendary mangaka which has unfortunately passed away recently. And it is Japan and King of Wolves by Kentaro Miura. Now, um, yeah, it's very sad news to hear that he has passed away. Um, I really would have loved to for him to complete Berserk. Um, but of course, uh, well, we can't do anything about it now anymore except for support him further with the deluxe editions and manga like this. Um, yeah, this is Japan. Uh, I think it came out before Berserk started, but I could be wrong. I think it is because Buronson also worked on it, also on this one. So that's pretty uh, cool. 30 euros, I think I paid 30 for both or uh, this one. Yeah, both, both 30 euros. And um, here you have the synopsis if you want to read it. It's uh, quite a bit of text. Um, so uh, I'm not gonna bother reading that because we have a lot more to cover but um, yeah I mean I'm very happy to be able to get this because I really want to support him um, well he is no more of course but still I want to support his works now last but not least the last one I got from a local shop is one that actually I didn't get personally it's my girlfriend she lives in Germany uh, and it's Doro Hedoro and you'll be like what the hell is that this is the German limited edition Omnibus. And it actually has a snake print feel to it. It's very nice. Uh, it also comes with three shikishi uh, of the pretty much the covers of the normal singles that we have in English. And it is really, really nice quality. It's by Manga Cult, which is one of the uh, German publishers. And uh, I'm very happy to have this in our collection. Yes, yes. It's also kind of crazy how, how cheap German volumes are. This one's 25. Still not bad for a 3-in-1, I think. 
but uh, you usually pay like 6 euros for a volume there, which is kinda makes English volumes look bad. But anyway, let's continue to the stuff that I got from web shops. And let's get started with a romance series, which I honestly, it's my favorite romance. I don't read a lot of romance to be fair, but it is so good. I could honestly recommend it to anyone. It is a tropical fish yearns for snow. And we have three through seven. So now I'm up to date. And uh, I love this series so much. I never read Yuri before, but I decided to try this one. Um, and it is so, so wholesome. Like you really feel like warm inside and nice. And it, it, it is great. It really, really is. Here are some of the art, which also looks amazing. Very big panels, so very quick reads. Uh, but uh, it's so good. It's so nice. It's, it's not like... Uh, um, there's not like a lot of uh, action, if you know what I'm saying in here. It's more so about the feelings that they have uh, for each other. And the feelings that they describe. And it is just... It's just great. I, I love this series a lot. So let's continue with the next one. And the next one we got is actually Jojo Part 3 Volume 8. I'm still missing quite a few volumes of Part 3. It doesn't want to stand on its own for some reason. But this one was on Amazon for like, I think it was like 8 euro or 9 euro. And I was like, I had to have to pick it up, you know. I just have to. Iggy on the cover, very cute. And uh, it is Jojo, so uh, nice hardcover, one and a half volumes I believe. Uh, and the art looks great. Very, very cool. Next up. I've already talked about this mangaka before, Kazuo Koike, Color of Rage. If you think Lone Wolf and Cub, Summer Executioner are too expensive, Crying Freeman, everything, very understandable. They're all out of print as far as I know, except for this one. It's a one shot, probably the, one of the lowest ratings on my anime list, but I thought, you know what, I just need to have it, you know. It's Kazuo Koike, I need to have all of his works. Yeah, I just really want to try it. It's in the seal, so I obviously haven't read it, but uh, let's read the synopsis. Two slaves free themselves from a slave ship. One a Japanese man, the other an African-American. After escaping, they find themselves on the shore of Edo-era Japan, a society with strong caste system, isolated from the world. How will the Japanese people perceive this giant black man? How will they survive? But first things first, how will they get these shackles off their feet? Okay, uh, I don't know. As other works sound a lot more interesting to me, I loved Lone Wolf and Cub. One of my favorite mangaka, one of my favorite manga ever. Like, uh, it's, it's in my top 9 manga video, just saying. Um, it's great, but uh, we'll see how this one turns out. Next up, we have another comedy. It's Grand Blue Dreaming. And now I am officially up to date. Finally, it took long enough, but I thought, you know, I, I, every time I read this, I loved it. And I was like, oh, sad, I already finished it. And then I didn't buy anything anymore. So now I'm finally up to date and uh, I'm very happy about that because it's uh, one of my favorite comedies ever. It is so damn good. Like the comedy in this, I look at his face. Like, how can you not laugh at that? It's just, it's amazing. It's honestly amazing. Not for all ages though. Uh, I would say it's uh, 18 plus apparently, so uh, but it's it's very good, very very nice. Next up, let's start with this one. I already bought some volumes of this series before. I already had volume three, but now I bought the rest, volume one and two second hand. The rest from Book Depository, and it's Drifters. Yep, it is Drifters. Very very nice. Still ongoing. Has an anime which I haven't watched. Apparently, it's great. Um, and uh, amazing art, like holy shit. I haven't read it yet, again, just like with the rest of my collection pretty much. Not even kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, very out of print, volume one through three, but man, this looks so damn good. Like, oh my god. Very, very nice, I must say. And volume one, oh my god, synopsis time. From the creators of Helsing. AD. 1600s. The final battle to control Japan's future is being waged. Shimaru to Toyoisa sets out his sights on the opponent's general's head in an all-out assault on enemy forces. On the edge of death, a door to another world opens and swallows Shimazu. 
He awakens in a place that is not here, in a time that is not now, where the strongest samurai from the period of warring provinces in Japan are brought to a new world of war, where elves, dragons, goblins and other warrior drifters snatched from Earth's history are used as chess pieces in an endless game of blood, destruction and madness. Very, very cool, I must say. Definitely gonna read this uh, at some point. Pretty much what I say about every single manga, but uh, I'm looking forward to read this, for sure. We still have quite a bit to go through, so let's continue. And let's start with a manga cow which I had never bought anything from before, and it's Bridges. Just kidding, it's a bright story. I called that Bridges in a collection review before in the stream, and uh, people were getting mad. But anyway, Bridges, Volume 1, Kaori Mori, hardcover with a dust cover around it. It's uh, very nice. Um, let's see, it's without the dust cover. It's uh, brown. It's a uh, doobie brown. Okay, um, yes. Here's the art, it's absolutely amazing. Like, honestly, oh my god. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. And I'm not even kidding. Oh my god, I'm, I'm doing the dust cover without even... Anyway, uh, yeah, it's amazing art. And it's a volume one, uh, so let's uh, look for the synopsis. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, that's the other synopsis. Okay, cool. The 19th century Silk Road to Lavish Life, chronicling the story of Amir Halgal, a young woman from a nomadic tribe betrothed to a 12-year-old boy. What the fuck? Eight years her junior. That's illegal. Coping with cultural differences, blossoming feelings for her new husband, and expectations from both her adoptive and birthed families, Amir strives to find her role as she settles into a new life and a new home in society quick to define that role for her. Very, very cool, I must say. Um, yeah, first uh, book from this mangaka. Very excited to read it, I must say. Very, very cool. But that isn't the last series I picked up from uh, Kaoru Mori, actually. Because, as you know, I bought Emma Volume 4. And uh, that's definitely a very out-of-print volume. So I decided to pick up the rest because I really want to read the rest. And we have 1, 3 and 5. And you might uh, think, well, if you already have 4, you're still missing 2. And you would be correct, I'm still missing two, but um, that is for some reason still in print in Canada and the US, but not in Europe, so that's absolutely awful. Uh, so I'm hoping for a reprint, and if not, I'll have to get it more expensive. Um, but I think I'm just gonna wait for the reprint, to be honest. So, that's very nice. Also, hardcover with a dust cover. Omnibus in this case, same art, because as it is the same mangaka. I like this hardcover a lot more, I must say. The, the font is very nice. I like the green color. Uh, it's also reversible dust cover. If you like to reverse that, you can. Very cool. You can also uh, put it back on, I hope. Yes, very cool. Um, actually, synopsis? No? Oh, this is on the back, actually. So let's read the synopsis. Calling upon his former governess, William Jones, gentleman, is startled when his knock is answered by an uncommonly beautiful servant, the soft-spoken Emma. Throughout his visit, William's eyes drift to the maid whenever she enters the room and he contrives to meet Emma socially as she goes out about her errand. But London society is a web of strict codes and divisions for the son of a wealthy merchant seeking out a working class girl is simply not done. William, William's father plans for his son to marry into the peerage and elevate the Jones family to greater heights, but although William says and does what is expected of him, he longs only for Emma's company. Wow, oh, that's kind of sweet. That's kind of cute. Okay, okay. 1, 3 and 5, volume 2 still left to go. Now next up, boys and girls, we have a manga which I got from a Discord member, actually. For my birthday, Dora Hidoro Volume 7, as you can see, very, very nice. Thank you very much, Sinto Bas, from the server. Looks absolutely magnificent. I should definitely reread that soon. Thank you very much. I'm gonna do the next two 
as a culmination because I got these two from Alex, also from my server, Sweetness and Lightning and, and Kigurumi Guardians. Yes, yes. This is by the creator of Penguin Drum, which is pretty cool because I haven't read that yet, but I really want to uh, read that. Uh, and Sweetness and Lightning, which is by the mangaka that wrote Sweetness and Lightning, which is uh, also very cool. Um, yes, yeah, so let's look into the art. This was from his own collection, he gave it to me, which was very nice. Uh, and it looks pretty cute, I must say. Both are um, Slice of Lives, I believe. And uh, it's pretty cute. Here you have the synopsis on the back. You have still a lot to go through, so uh, you can read it for yourself, pause the video, and have uh, fun. Then we have a manga which I traded with Out of Print Expert. Uh, I saw Eden Volume 1 and 2 from Dark Horse in English at Epo, but uh, I traded it with him because apparently there's a German version uh, which is actually complete and not cancelled, and still um, for a pretty respectable price, so that's nice. So I traded it for Bokurano Hours Volume 3, which is the only out of print volume from that series and I'm very happy to own it because, uh, yeah, we can finally complete it now. My girlfriend already has Volume 1, so now I just need to get the rest. Very nice. As you can see, very, very cool. I'm going to close the windows. I should have probably done that uh, sometime before, I'm sorry about that. Anyway, let's uh, continue because we have still a few more to go. After which, we'll go to the light novels and end off with out of print volumes, very out of print volumes. So, next up, there was a stream before where people, um, I was just buying manga and people were donating and I said, if you donate, I'll buy whatever manga you want. So, Sintabas donated and he asked me to buy a Yaoi, so... So I bought Seaside Stranger, as you can see, it doesn't want to stand on its own. Uh, but uh, it, I have to say, high quality volume, I really like the quality of this volume. But I'm just not really a Yaoi fan, personally. Um, I don't know, I just, I just, it's just not for me, I, I yeah, it's just not. Um, here you have the synopsis, I'm not going to read everything anymore because uh, there's a lot to go through still. Here is how it looks. Um, I'll show you some of the inside, hopefully not uh, some weird stuff, oh you're, you're pff, uh, anyway, that was some weird stuff, but um, not weird, sorry, um, not family friendly stuff, exactly, but uh, yeah, v thank you very much Sintelbaas, I am going to read it, um, thank you, yes, now we go to the light novels that I picked up. And starting with something big, I must say. It is the Monogatari Final Season box set, which is very, very nice. I got this on a 20% off sale at Book Depot, actually, like half a year ago. This was part of it, and I'm very happy to own it. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. I really need to uh, continue Monogatari, but I have some reviews of Light Novels to do first. So do that later, but uh, I, these look so nice. Like vertical, honestly, if you're watching this, great job. Like these look so nice. I think I read the first two volumes of Monogatari season two. So I'm not quite here yet, but um, yes, they are very nice indeed. Um, yes, very nice. Next up, we have a uh, light novel, which I actually got in yesterday, and it's going to be for review. It is A World Without God, Fallen Angels, by the folks over at Moonquell. They sent it to me for review, so I'm going to review it after I review Lord of Goblins Volume 2. And uh, it is a light novel, so I don't, I'm not going to bother for showing you the art, because there isn't any, apart from this here on the back. Um, but um, yes, I'm uh, going to read this, of course, and I'm pretty uh, interested in it. So let's read the uh, synopsis. After being forced to go on a supernatural search for angels, Takiya encounters a series of peculiar events that change his life forever. Together, he and the cute and whimsical Ayumi scour for clues as to who or what may be creating the catastrophic events plaguing their small, snow-laden town. When they uncover secrets hidden in plain sight, the two high school students realize that the world as they know it may come to an end. 
Will a miracle save them, or will this winter be the last one they will ever see? Sounds pretty cool, I must say. Looks nice as well. A bit misprinted on the top, but not bad. And I really like the cover on this one. I really do. And uh, of course, review coming at some point. Because I'm kind of busy with school, not gonna lie. Yes. Thank you for sending it to me, Moonquill. Very much appreciated. Next up, we have a certain magical index, Volume 3. Uh, I don't have Volume 2 yet, but I'm gonna buy that soon. Um, because it was out of stock at the time I bought this. So, Volume 3, as you can see. I'm going to go through the light novels pretty quick because it's just text inside, you know. Nothing special. Um, next up, a series which I haven't started yet, which is Eminence in Shadow. Now, these are probably one of the best looking light novel volumes I've seen. As you can see, they are hardcover. Not having Volume 2 because that was way too expensive for some reason on Book Depository. It's like 50% more expensive than these. But these are hard covers, as you can see. They look very, very nice. Let's take the dust cover off. I don't think I've actually done that yet, personally. And look at that. That's probably the best looking, best looking, like, uh, hard cover by itself I've seen so far. Really, really nice, I must say. There you have it. Eminence in Shadow. Next up. I want to eat your pancreas uh, by Yoru Sumino. The same mangaka also made At Night I Become a Monster uh, and another one which the name I don't recall at the moment. But it's very nice looking. It's by Airship, which is uh, basically uh, um, Seven Seas. I don't know why I'm showing the letters. Anyway, uh, this is how it looks. Feels very nice quality. I'm going to read it. One shot, one volume. Very nice. Next up. We have Barkano, um, which I, it's a classic. I really want to read it. Uh, we have volume two as well as six. So I only need four. This is the last out of print volume before I, I'm going to start collecting the rest. I just bought volume one to get a feel for it, see if I actually like it. And uh, yes, very good. Speed running this right now. Because I don't want you guys to watch a one hour long video. Next up, we have Death Note, another note, the Los Angeles BB murder cases by Nishio Ishin. That's the whole reason why I picked it up, I'm not gonna lie. Massive Nishio Ishin fan, and uh, when I see something with his name on it, I'm buying it, pretty much, because I love his stories. Death Note, another note, the light novel. Very, very cool. Um, it does attract uh, dust and hairs uh, quite a lot, uh, I see. Uh, I have cats, so that's just gonna happen. Uh, something behind here. Uh, not really, let's keep that on and uh, let's go to the next one. Next up we have Solo Leveling Volume 2 and I must say this cover looks absolutely positively smashing. Uh, just like Volume 1 but I actually like this one better because of the color and the different emblem on the, f on the cover. Very, very nice looking. One more snack of light novels to go guys. And let's start with Mushoku Tensei, the light novel Volume 3. Uh, if you don't know this, very popular anime at the moment, uh, the first proper isekai, I believe, in existence. If you say a certain anime is copying it, uh, well, this one certainly isn't because it was actually first. Um, just like someone in the comments right now, probably. Anyway, um, yes, I really, really like the anime, so I was like, let's pick up the light novel, more info, more text, more dialogue, love it. Absolutely amazing. Next up, we have Kagero Days and Volume 5 and that. Uh, picking, slowly picking up the rest of this series because it does look very, very cool. And I heard great things about it. As you see, got it from Amsterdam, half off, which is very, very cool. Yes, yes, very thin volumes, but I still like it. Next up, Classroom of the Elite Novel, Volume 6, as you can see. More is on the way, and I'm very happy uh, to have more, even though I have, still haven't read the first volume. Very cool. Then we have Mushoku Tensei again, Volume 7. Uh, very nice looking cover. I love that cover. It looks very, very nice. For some reason they're all like kind of misprinted, but um, uh, not that bad. So that's cool. We have So I'm a Spider. So what? Absolutely gorgeous covers on the on this series. Like honestly, oh my god. Um, heard great things about it as well. Um, so uh, that's very cool. Yes, yes. And the final light novel, we have Spice and Wolf, Volume 18. I might be saying, 
Mr. Manga Reader, why volume 18? Well, I'm gonna explain the two with another light novel. And it's just not just one light novel, but it's uh, a big one, a big boy. And it actually got a reprint recently. And that is, it's not gonna fit on screen, sorry. It's Spice and Wolf, the Anniversary Collector's Edition. Volume 1 through 17, all adapted in this hard le leather hardcover. Very, very nice. Ha very happy to have it. Unfortunately, it doesn't fit on camera. Sorry about that, but it's uh, it's it's a big boy, okay? It's a chunky... It's a, I can't even open it on camera. That's how chunky it is, pretty much. It's uh, big. It has colored pages as well. It is a light novel, though. So I picked up volume 18. Oh, with the one hand, it's kind of work out, not gonna lie. I picked up volume 18. Because it, they, he decided to continue all of a sudden after releasing that, so that's cool. And um, yeah, Spice and Wolf, very, very cool. Then next up we have a box set. It did come in damaged, but it is what it is. Uh, yeah, it's pretty ripped, as you can see here at the top, maybe. Not yet, as you can see there. But um, yeah, the problem is with chipping. I'm probably going to make a video on that. If you buy it from somewhere, they only like, when you refund it, they only... Um, when you want to refund and you need to send it back, they only give you like 5 euro for the shipping back. Shipping costs like 30 euro and I'm like, what the hell, I'm losing money because you can't ship stuff properly. But um, anyway, yeah, box set, all of the 8 volumes. And soft cover by uh, Harper Collins. never heard of that publisher before, but very cool. I think this series is only made in India? I, I, I could be wrong about that, but uh, somewhere. So, let's continue. Because we have... Quite a lot more from this manga cap, but I'm gonna go. We're gonna go over the very out of print ones last, like I said. So first, let's cover some stuff that I got from Japan. Imported it. I didn't go to Japan, sadly. We have Control T Mini Frameworks, Mini Works from Inyo Asano. It's basically an Inyo Asano art book. And this is a small version, my girlfriend got the big version, very very cool. Uh, art and some uh, small stories as well. I'm not going to show much because you just need to buy it pretty much. Very cool. Then another art book which won't fit on camera. This is uh, also from Japan because it's not released in English. It's uh, Pandora Hearts, the second art book called There Is. Amazing art like this is one of my favorite art in manga period like it's so damn nice So uh, definitely pick that one up and if I were you Then we have some from Germany First up the gray man art book as you can see uh, My girlfriend bought this second hand in Germany uh, It's great art. It's not his best art like not the best art from his era or her, I still don't remember what gender, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just, it's in a very nice art book, but it doesn't uh, cover a lot of his best art. But I'm still very happy to own it, as I do want to support the mangaka, of course. Then next up, we have, and this one's kind of cultured, we have a Batum uh, art book uh, in German, but it's an art book, so who cares? Um... And uh, it is uh, basically just um, showcasing Himiko and uh, not so much clothing. Um, so yes, I bought this with my girlfriend, so it's girlfriend approved, don't worry about it. Um, yes, in these last three months is Blade of the Immortal. And this is a hardcover, it looks absolutely positively smashing. If you love the art, definitely pick this up if you can for a good price. Because this I got this for like 50, which is actually really good because these go for around 100 normally. Because it's uh, out of print, as uh, everything is these days. Um, so I'm very happy to own that. And the final big boy, which is actually in print. We have Berserk Deluxe Edition Volume 8 to support uh, his works. Kentaro Miura, absolute uh, master writer. And here we have it, Volume 8. I still need to read Volume 7 and 8, which I'm going to read next week. As my girlfriend hasn't even read the deluxe editions yet. So she's going to start reading them. And I'm going to continue reading them. Very, very cool. And now let's go ahead to... Um, actually, first we have another series from Japan. And this is actually my favorite anime. And someone was selling it in the Netherlands. The first 10 volumes out of 22 volumes. Uh, for like a couple tenors. Like it was crazy. When I saw it, I had to jump on it. It is Rainbow. And uh, yeah, like I said, my favorite anime is it is uh, a seinen 
uh, and I'm gonna make a video on this at some point. It's it's so damn good. It's by Madhouse when Madhouse was like at its prime, 2011, and uh, it's basically friendship is power done correctly. I would say, fastest summary I've ever done in my life. But um, yeah, it is it is so damn good. Like, let me see some art for you. It is in Japanese as is, as it doesn't have an English release, but I'll just have to learn Japanese. You know belongs with the weeb lifestyle i would say so that's very cool you know the spines and uh, you you probably won't believe it but the colors are the color from the rainbow absolutely wonderful very very cool starting with the first heavily out of print manga that we got it is blackjack now these were advertised as excellent condition but they are unfortunately far from that which is not so nice um, but I still kept them because I could have sent them back, but that would cost me a lot of money just to send them back because they don't, they only like give you like 80 euro back when it comes to shipping. It would cost me like 40 euro to ship this. And also these volumes are just really, really expensive at the moment. And you, I couldn't find them anywhere for a fair price on Bookfinder and I paid around, uh, let's say 120 euro for all four of them, which I think is still good. If I clean them up a bit, because these stickers need to like go off, hopefully without breaking uh, the actual volumes. And you know, these stickers aren't very nice, I must say. They, they, they aren't very good looking. This one, uh, there's also one of them which it looks like someone shat on it or something. Yeah, this one, like what the hell is that? But um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna try to take these stickers off because they don't look good with them anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm still happy to have it though because I do want to complete it. I'd rather have it in like excellent condition like this uh, Told me it would be but uh, At least I have them in my possession now so that does make me happy because sending them back, you know, it would cost me money so Now we get to the last two final series of this haul and these are quite huge I must say when it comes to value and rarity. These are seen as some of the most legendary works in existence. And let me show you. The first one is indeed Phoenix. These are all the volumes I got in the last two, almost three months. But these are not in perfect condition, okay? I'm happiest about volume 9 because volume 9 is like non-existent it actually doesn't exist that's how expensive and rare it is but there are some problems the best one here is definitely volume 7 it's the right nice spine color nice condition and all that uh, then volume 9 and then 5 4 11 3 pretty much these aren't really that interesting when it comes to condition because they're just in really good condition so let's just uh, put those apart uh, and I'll tell you about the rest. So, volume 11. Uh, I checked that that is not mold, but it is damaged nonetheless. Other than that, it's, 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 it's acceptable. Like, when it comes to damage, it does like a little bit at the bottom here, but... Uh, yeah, th th this is kind of unfortunate. The package was wet. Uh, not, not wet, it had been wet before, I saw. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it didn't spread to any other volumes, that's okay. But still, I uh, wasn't very happy about that, so I got some money back for that. Um, let's go to Volume 4 now. I bought this with Volume 5, so 5 is also the same damage. But pretty much, these are very, very sun bleached, as you can see. Like, the front and the back look absolutely fine. And the condition itself is really, really good for Phoenix, don't get me wrong. But when it comes to the back, it, it, it's supposed to be, I think, more of an orange. And right now it's like more of a brown going to white. I don't think it looks too terrible. Uh, and for the price, I think I shouldn't be mad because these go for around two to three hundred euro. And I think I paid one fifty for uh, four and five, and they are both very expensive. So I'm still happy, but still. And this one, I'm gonna make a separate video about this. This is from World of Books, and uh, you, I don't know if you can see it well on camera, but this is absolutely like horrible like look at this very folded very damaged this as well um, uh, let's see what else was there no 
You know, this, this doesn't look very nice, does it? Especially the cover is just so damaged like a fucking truck drove over it or something. It was very bad. Um, I think it did get a little better because I remembered it was worse before. But um, yeah, still this looks does look ugly. So after some like uh, back and forth, basically I got half of my money back. So I paid I think around 30 euro for this, which is not bad. But man, this cover is so, so bad. This is by far the worst cover I have in my, con in my collection. Like, yeah, now you can see it very clearly. It's very bad condition on the cover. And also the top here. Yeah, that does look very, very bad. So, um, yeah, this is definitely not... This is something I'm not happy with. And it's all because of their shipping. But I'm going to make a video about that. About shipping uh, from uh, World of Books and other stores. Because I think it needs to be addressed. So, that was it for Phoenix. Very happy to have it. Uh, I'm only missing volume 1. I did buy it, but it got lost in transit. Same story with another volume 7 and a volume 12. Uh, I don't know. Everything is getting lost in transit at this point. But um, I need volume 1. Let's see. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6. Was also on the way, but it also got lost in transit. Volume uh, 8... No, not 8. Sorry, short volume 10, which is also very expensive. And then volume 12. Yeah. But, I'm going to show you something else before that. Because, by far, the best deal I had this, this uh, time, and also one of the best deals I've ever had, period, is this. Like, I'm so stoked. Mushishi. Okay. Complete. In, I would say G4 condition because it's a little bit yellow but that's it like there's no damage on this whatsoever it's perfect condition pretty much other than a little yellowing on the top and a little bit on the spine I bought this for 300 euro let it sink in if you don't know Mushishi is more expensive worth more sells for more than Phoenix complete like Phoenix, are complete around thousand dollars, let's say. This, uh, anywhere between twelve hundred and two thousand, depending on the condition. I think this could probably sell for around sixteen, eighteen hundred. But, all right, calm down. I read volume one yesterday. I'm gonna read volume two today. I'm really enjoying it. I still think I'm still thinking of selling it because I don't like the way that it's a, like an omnibus for the last volume. I think that just doesn't make any sense. It looks kind of ugly. Um, and they are Del Rey, not, not the biggest fan of Del Rey. Plus, the German version are one bigger. They are like Viz Signature size, which is very nice. Um, and they are actually in print. They are for sale for 15 euro, which is expensive for German manga. But they are so high quality. They look so good. I have them at my girlfriend's place, so I can't show you. But they are very, very nice. So I'll probably end up selling this once I've finished it and then keep the German version. Anyway, fellow manga readers, I want to thank you very, very much for watching this huge haul. I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in months. I've had my holiday, I've had work, I've had school, I've been busy. It's probably going to take some time before I upload again, but I'll do my best to uh, make some videos. I've also reorganized my collection, so I want to make a video on that. I have a light novel review uh, to do and um, yes I do want to make some more videos soon but uh, school is of course number one priority. Everyone thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!